cool. I've got some pictures. I've got a little picture quiz for you. Yeah. Woo-hoo. So we'll give our first picture, please. So, um, so I want you to tell me what the following four creatures have in common. Okay, this is number one. The next one. Yeah, the next one. Yeah, not so good. The next one is a bit creepy as well. The next one, please. Ooh. Does anybody know what the... Yes, uh, young man at the back there. What do they have in common? Okay, he's gone silent on me now. <laughs> right, anybody know? Yeah? They do all eat food. <laughs> they all respire and have a circulatory system. It's something to do with their name. Think what day it is. Harvest. How can you think? Can you see a connection? Top left is a harvest mouse. How heavy do you think a harvest mouse is? Apparently the same weight as a 2p coin. They are so tiny. Um, bottom right, that was the second picture that came up. As unlikely as it seems, that is called a... You're very quick learners. Harvest fish. Good. I wish you'd been in my class when I was a teacher. So, um, top right, what do you suppose that is? A harvest mite. A harvest mite. And the next one is kind of an odd one out because it's not a harvest spider. It's actually a harvest man. It's a harvest man. Yeah. It's not a spider apparently, but it is an arachnid. There you go. It's got no fangs and it doesn't make a web. So there you go. But these are the ones that kind of appear in your house at this time of year. If you get those kind of leggy spiders up top. So these are all um, harvest creatures. They've all got harvest in the name. And it's Harvest Sunday. So how tenuous of a link was that? <laughs> so um, can you put the next picture up, please? So this is a picture from our house, actually. Um, I hope you can just about make out the rainbow on, on that. Um, looking from a, one of our bedroom windows across towards Castle Hill, and there's, there's a rainbow there. And when I think of harvest, I do think of the rainbow. And there is a, there is a connection, there is a reason for that. There is a particular Bible story that connects harvest and rainbows. And I wonder if any of the children, because it sounds like there are a few children in the room, know which Bible character is particularly connected with the rainbow. Anybody know? Yeah, go ahead. Noah, absolutely. Noah is connected with the rainbow. And at the end of the flood, which is the story of, of Noah in Genesis, when everything's been put back together again, God makes a promise. And this is the promise. As long as uh, the earth endures, as long as the earth lasts, exists, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. They will never end. So God is making a promise here and I'm obviously highlighting this seed time and harvest. God said that the rainbow, he chose the, to designate, if you like, the rainbow as being the sign of this promise that he would always provide and it's a reminder in the sky every time I see a rainbow I genuinely do think well that looks lovely but also I do think God is good it reminds me every time that God is good because he has promised always to provide and harvest I think is a time in particular when we thank God for his provision we you know look at the stuff on the front of the table here but not just limited to food, everything that he provides for us because he is good. Now, some of you may be aware that uh, in a former life of mine, I used to do farm work. Yes, honestly, it's true. I did farm work. As a teenager, this is, so it's going back a little way. My accent sounded slightly different at the time, but I won't inflict that upon you again this week. <laughs> now, I think you're taking the mickey. So I used to do farm work in my summer holidays. It was great. I used to get to drive tractors and everything. And nobody will let me drive one anymore. It's really, really sad. It was a long time ago, I have to confess. And so when I did look back to find a picture of myself working on the farm, this is the only one I could find. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> 
in the 1970s, every fashion conscious teenager in Dorset was wearing this. This is what we wore. I thought, oh, I thought it was very lifelike actually. Um, so, yeah, so this is uh, seed time, sowing the seed. It used to take ages. Those fields were so big. Um, and then I have got a picture of me and my brother and another friend um, at harvest. <laughs> can you make that out? Yes, you can probably just about make that out. Um, we're harvesting uh, wheat in that. I wonder again if any of the children can tell me what the name of the tool is that we're using in that picture. It's not a combine harvester. Yes, Micah. It's very nearly a hoe. It's very like a hoe. Yes, at the back. I can't hear you, sorry. Somebody shout for me, I can't. No? Sorry? Yes? Wow, very close to a sickle. A sickle is just a bit smaller than that. It's a scythe. It's a scythe. It's got, it's got a really, really long, sharp blade and a really long handle. And uh, this is uh, an example of synchronised scything. <laughs> oh, well, it's... It's just, it's just the Dorset alternative to synchronised swimming. It's similar kind of... Um, Olymp never got to the Olympics for some reason. You had to be very careful because you could... If you were stood to the right of somebody else, you could lose a leg. Um, but yeah, this is, this is scything. So, okay, obviously, that's not really me. Um, my granddad probably did that. Uh, so the next picture shows something a bit more realistic. Of That's what we kind of use. I say we, half fat chance. Uh, that's, a, that's a sewing uh, drilling machine, putting the seed in. And um, the next, in fact, this is a little video clip. Can we play the video? Just click again. That's right. So I took this in September. Go camping, they said, for the peace and quiet. This is literally the other side of the fence from our van. So, I mean, the noise came and went, um, which is okay, but the clouds of dust that blew in our direction were, oh, well, it was agricultural. Um, and a bit of a picture of our holidays. Um, but anyway, back to God's promise. I must stay on track. The next slide, please. So, oh, that's it. So as long as earth endures, what's the first one? Children. Seed time and... Harvest, da, da 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 will never cease. God is saying, don't worry, I will provide for you. I would like to point out that harvest is also hard work. God providing for you doesn't mean to say you just... Um, in fact, there's one of my favourite Bible words is in this next verse from Proverbs. I don't know whether you've got favourite Bible words, but uh, can we show the next slide, please? Sluggards. Slug, sluggards. I love that word. It just means a really lazy person. Okay. I don't know why they chose the slug because looking at the rate our lettuces get eaten, I'm not sure that slugs are that slow really. But in Proverbs 20 verse 4, it says sluggards, sluggards, sluggards. Actually, that is a good sounding Dorset word, isn't it? Sluggards do not plow in season. So at harvest time, sorry, I'm lapsing now. <laughs> not in my faith, just my speaking. So at harvest time, they look but find nothing. In other words, God is a provider, but we still have to work, and we just have to put those two together. So kids, it's no good praying that you'll pass your exam and not revising. I know, I tried. <laughs> in fact, if I asked for a show of hands, I, probably the majority of the people in this room have tried that. Oh Lord, I know I should have been up last night revising, but anyway. So Jesus taught similar things, um, particularly on the Sermon of the Mount. So if we could have the next slide, please. So, um, consider the something. Ah, oh, it's another quiz. They do not sow or reap. They have no barns, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than birds? And just before you think, oh, he's given us the answer, it's birds. In the verse, it's a very particular type of bird. So, I'm very kind. It's multiple choice. Here's the first one. Consider the doves of the field. Next one. Consider the robins, or the next one, consider the ravens, or I think it's the next one, consider the emus. Of the, what? It's a bird. Um, do any of the children know, hint, it's not the emu. Go ahead. Anybody else? I, I really can't quite hear what you're saying. Yeah, shout out. 
Ostrich. No, it is one of these birds here, I promise you. Which, yeah, go ahead. I really can't hear you, sorry. I'm going to assume you said ravens, because I can't hear and that's what it is. Consider the ravens of the field. And Jesus also said this. Don't reduce your life to the pursuit of food and drink. Don't let your mind be filled with anxiety or worry. People of the world who don't know God pursue these things, but you have a father caring for you, a father who knows all your needs. Remember the rainbow, it's God's promise that he will always provide for us. And it means that we can be thankful rather than anxious and we learn to trust him. We have to work, but not worry. Work, but not worry. So, we're thanking God today for his provision all these foods. And I just have uh, a few questions I want to ask you. And I want to know if you know where your food comes from. So here's the first one. Bananas. We love bananas. But do they come from Costa Rica, Canada, China, or the Czech Republic? Yeah. What do we think? Costa Rica? Put your hand up in Costa Rica. Canada. China. Czech Republic. Well, they may come from some of those countries, but the bulk of the t- bananas that come to the UK come from Costa Rica, and that is in Central America. You might just be able to make that out. So right, just between North and South America, Costa Rica. How's the next one? Pasta. So, India, Italy, Indonesia, Ireland. Um, so, this is... The, the rice that cuts, the rice, the pasta that comes into the UK, where does the bulk of it come from? India? Italy? Indonesia? And Ireland? That was a bit too easy, wasn't it? Italy. Right, next one, please. Cocoa. Chocolate. So I'm not saying where does the chocolate come from, where does the cocoa come from? Is it Germany, Ghana, Guatemala, or Greece? Germany? Ghana, Guatemala, Greece, that was trickier, Ghana, the majority of the cocoa in this country comes from Ghana, which is in South, uh, is in Western Africa, yeah, okay, just two more, oranges, no lemons, Sweden, Sri Lanka, Sudan, or Spain, what's tricky isn't it, Sweden, Sri Lanka, Sudan, or Spain. Yeah, it is Spain. So Southwest Europe. And then the last one, rice. This is particularly basmati rice. Does it come from Iceland? Oh, that sounds possible. <laughs> Iraq, <laughs> India, or Israel. Oh, so much rice comes from... It's ice, not rice in Iceland. Sorry. Iceland? Oh, that's good. <laughs> Iraq, India, and Israel. So, yeah, it's India. You're all too bright for me. Okay. So, if we can have the next image, please. So, just to sum up, there is a rainbow on that slide. I hope you can just about see it. It's actually a rainbow of a field of barley, so it seems particularly appropriate. God has promised that seed time and harvest will never end. He will provide. As we work with him, he is our provision. Jesus challenged our priorities in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, don't worry, don't be anxious but to thank your heavenly father, to trust in him. And finally, the Apostle Paul gets in on this as well, because he says, and God who supplies seed for the sower and bread to eat will also supply you with the seed you need and will make it grow and produce a rich harvest from your generosity. He meets our needs and in so doing, he enables us to help to meet the needs of others. He gives us bread, all sorts of food that symbolises so that we don't go hungry, and he gives us seed, so that we can help others to feed. That seed might be our money, our time, our energy, it might be good deeds, or it may actually be the food that we bring and give to somebody else. So as we're bringing our harvest offerings in just a short while, we can thank God for his goodness, thank God for his generosity, that out of that we're able to bless others too. Okay, thank you.